Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chain Design Channel. This channel is about sharing Rhino 3D knowledge to students and professionals, learning various Rhino 3D techniques. Couple of my YouTube subscribers asked me how to model a stone look like natural. So here we are, we are going to model this rock and put the animal footprint on it. Are you ready? Let's get started. Like many of my video, I like to take a look on the structure of the object that I'm going to model. At this time, you can go to the Google and just type in stone tool and you will have this a lot of uh, stone that's being shaping pointed things there. Um, I will suggest you to pick up the one something like this have a front view, back view, and the side view. So it kind of give you a very good visual reference. So what I do is you click on this image and then you kind of save it as uh, into somewhere you can find. And let's go back to the Rhino. We are going to the top view and we will type it picture on the command bar. And then you can bring in the image you just save. And that's bringing somewhere here. Uh, you can also lock it. So uh, when we trace the outline, it won't affect it. Now, you can choose the uh, just using a straight line. I like to use the curve. I create uh, more point if it is uh, some sort of a corner over there. And I like to uh, trace into the red color because my picture is pretty dark here in the background. So let's go ahead and trace it uh, with the curve command that we have. Try to get it as close as possible, but you don't want to get too close with that tiny little spot. Um, because if you have it too many curve, it's going to be harder later on for the edit. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. So you won't have to see me doing this like in the slow motion. All right. So that's fast forward. Again, you don't have to get it super close. Um, if it is a little bit rounded, that's okay. Okay, once it's done, uh, we are going to move this picture to somewhere else, just a little bit over here, so it's not on top of uh, our drawing. And I'm going to scale it down because this is just for the reference. Okay, so now we have this is done. You see, this is a lot of point there, but it's okay. You don't want to rebuild at this time because once you rebuild, they will become too smooth and we actually want to have like a really sharp edge looking. All right, so let's go to the side view. Um, we want to go to the solid and you have extruded planar curve straight. You can set like very high at this point. I'm just going to eyeball it to a, a reasonable thickness and you can also gamble to change the thicknesses if you want. Okay, so we weren't able to get exactly like the picture, but we try to get something similar like that. First of all, we need to create a few faces to start with. Uh, I'm going to move it into the green layer so it's easier for you to see. All right, so I'm going to try to uh, bowling different some big faces out first. So bowling difference this out of the green one. So we got that first faces and then um, look like on the right side is one another big one on the left side is another one there. So I'm going to um, creating another block here and kind of tilt it a little bit in this way. At the same time, I want to move it a little bit like this. And again, uh, the way you are doing may not be exactly the same like my angle. You can be like creative at this point. So let's take a look on how it look here. Falling difference this one out of this one. Okay, looking good to me. 
and we need another one so you kind of creating few more block and going here and there and it's kind of editing a little bit so i'm going to fast forward again to save you some time because um this process can be really uh various size it depends on how you do it so that's fast forward to see this process one thing you want to keep in mind is the stone was originally designed for um weapon so their age are kind of sharp in order to get the age really sharp you want to kind of tilt it your block before you bowling it as close to the age possible but don't worry, worry about if it is not close enough because i'm going to show you another way to make it a little bit sharper so now here we have our stone it have most of the big faces coming out um, like the one here uh, you also have like um, the the age is not always the same line it also has some small faces so this is what we want to reach in our design coming over here first of all i want to make sure all the age is a little bit thinner but i just don't want to ball in too many time um it won't look good so what i'm going to use the command it's called a uh, cage edit what it does is you click on is um, this object and then you choose the bounding box on your command bar and you hit enter to align to the wall right here uh, i'm going to show you first on the preset it has xyz for full count and what that means is it will creating a box it is a maximum volume of this object and you click enter one more time it's going to give you four point control point on the x on the y and also on the z okay so we don't care about the z at this point but we do need to have more of a x and more of a y so i'm going to go back one step we're going to do the same thing type it cage edit pick up your object which is the red one here and we want to choose the bounding box now on the x point if you click on it you are able to change it let's change to 12 at the y let's change to 12 as well well actually the x probably doesn't need 12 let's change it back to the 8 so we have x for 8 count y for 12 count and z for 4 count let's click enter and you're going to see a lot of point here okay so what i'm going to do is gonna go to you you have to kind of work on all four view at the same time so we are going to pick up this edges so i'm gonna pick up the right two and then since the right two is not is now it's not on level actually i'm going to pick up whatever close to the button let's go to the top view zooming a little bit it's easier for you to see so i want to choose all those all of this on the edge right and then i'm gonna use the gumball to bring them in together okay so what you're going to see here in the perspective you kind of see they become narrower maybe i need to do a little bit more so i'm gonna go back again to pick up those four and again you want to you can move it down move it higher you can tweak it or you can do what i just did to scale it down all right when you get into that point i think it's too narrow you do want to have a little bit surface there all right now this time what we wanted to do is this area maybe this area maybe this area okay so let's try one more things here and let's bring them down as well 
okay so you kind of have something like that i'm going to fast forward again at this point so you will see in the fast pass you don't want to get too narrow or too sharp on the edges because it might break the model so be really careful on that one one thing really important when you try to scale them moving the point uh, definitely you don't want to move it for example like this one way to the bottom it's going to break the model or something like that so uh, take a look if you click on your your object take a look on it it should be close uh, solid solid poly surface all right so that's really important you don't want to spend all the time working on it and then realize you know they are not working well all right so now we get the basic foam done um, notice that there are a lot of sharp edges and mine is kind of a uh, curve right so we need to make it more of the sharp looking so at this point uh, my little trick is turn them into the mesh because mesh will bring in a lot of little triangle and the square in there. So let's go to the mesh and we click on our object and we want to try to stay in the few polygons as possible and we can kind of preview it. Uh, it's hard to see at this point, but um, you, can, you can just click OK. And if you pick up the mesh, you will see that uh, this is our mesh. For me, this mesh is still a lot of them. So what we can do, my little trick again, is to reduce the mesh. So when we reduce, uh, you have the command called reduce mesh. And then you can reduce by polygon, um, or you can reduce by uh, percentage. Let's say I'm going to reduce a lot. So let's say I want to reduce 80% of them and we can preview um, this guy. So now it, it, you can see th this is a lot more readable and you can reduce even more. Let's say 90% and we want to preview it. All right. Uh, looks all right to me. Um, we It's kind of I can handle and what I mean is we are going to edit one more time so we need to make sure that it's not way too many of them uh, let's do something now let's say we only want to have maybe 750 polygon and see what it come up with all right that looks good too or maybe even more I say 550 and at this point, we really don't care about if it is smooth because we want them to be a rock, right? All right, so now it will calculate a little bit. And now this is my new mesh, okay? I'm going to turn this into the green color so you will see better. All right, so what we wanted to do now is you can do additional editing if you want to by turn on the control point, you say, F10 is the hockey, or you can click on this icon here. So maybe I want to do a little bit addition um, is to select this point and pull up and pull down. But if you try to just select the point and pull up, you might break the model. So be really careful. Um, you, if there are multiple points joined together, you want to select both of them at the same time. All right. Now, if we're looking at this, it's hard for us to see how much we pull. And we want to go ahead and use the render view to check on it. All right, so I didn't do too much. Like something like this is too much. Okay, so we want to do it really mild. So it's not, it's just kind of giving a little bit more facet, but it's not like uh, giving it like way too much like dip in there so it will look unnatural so let's go ahead to kind of edit here and there and then you can play around to see you know how they work something like that okay all right so once everything is done uh we are going to do additional things is to put the uh, animal print on it but uh, i would like to turn this back to the nerve so it's going to use the command mesh to nerve 
Okay, so now if you take a look on this, I'm going to move it like this. So we were on our nerve uh, poly surface turning into the mesh now back to the nerve. And you can see it's really rocky looking now. Okay. Now let's go to the Google to find animal print image. If you go to the Google and then you type it animal footprint, you're going to see a lot of uh, black and white image here. Just click on any of them that you like, right click to download, not download, um, save this image to somewhere you can find it. Okay, so let's go back to the Rhino. When we are at the Rhino, again, we want to go to the top view. And then we want to bring in the image by picture command. So we come in here, we can bring in the image that we have. It doesn't matter about the size right now. And you can bring in the image. The one that I have is this. I think this is some sort of bird or chicken things there. And what we wanted to do is we will need to trace it. And again, you can lock the image so you won't keep clicking on it. And let's go to the red color layer and let's trace it. So when you trace it, since it's going to be on our rock and our rock is not really um, even. So it's okay if you don't get it exactly the same. Uh, we are using this just for reference. One thing you do need to pick, keep in mind though, if you are going to cast this piece, you need to make sure that it's not way too pointed or way too small uh, because we are going to extrude it the curve we are drawing right now and do a bowling. So if you have the gap is way too small, uh, you might have a casting issue later on. Okay, so this is what I have. I'm going to bring it to on top of my rock, kind of scale it and kind of reposition something like this. Maybe that's too big. Maybe I just want to have something small like this. Okay, and then I'm going to mirror that image to the other side and bring it about right there. Okay, so now I have two of them. Let's go look at the um, right view. Let's do under the solid, you have extruded planar curve and then you go straight. All right, so I'm going to turn this in the green. All right, so we kind of need to position it up a little bit, but I don't want to cut it just like that because this, oh, actually I need to turn it into the red color. Okay, so it's easier to see over here. All right, so you kind of need to tilt it a little bit based on our surface. So you won't have like one size too deep compared to the other side. And I also want to move up a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look on how they bowling. So bowling difference this out of those two. All right, so it's kind of very shallow here. Let's take a look on the render, but it's all right. Okay, so now we have this. We need to punch a hole right there. If you just go in to use a cylinder and then um, making a hole, for example, like whatever that size is for a cord to go through, it, it won't look natural because this should supposed to look uh, rough all the way around, right? So what I'm going to do instead of just punch a perfect size of a hole, uh, let me turn this into the ghost view. I'm going to mesh this guy and that's kind of preview and you can see this is like perfect square that's not what we're looking for uh, we want something really rough right so let's preview it and then we got something like this preview okay so if we click OK now we don't need this cylinder anymore we have something a little bit uh, shape like this okay and I'm also trying to scale it a little bit 
All right, so now this is mesh. This is polished surface. It's not going to work together. So that's turning this mesh back to surface. So mesh to nerve. And now we don't need that mesh. We have this nerve. And then balling difference, this guy, out of the red one. So now we have a hole. Okay, you can make it even less poly and add it a little bit so you won't look like a still look a little bit too perfect to me. But this is the demonstration. I just want to show you how to do it. So now this is the stone uh, with the animal print that we have. And I will really want to thank all my subscriber. You guys are awesome. You guys. Uh, leave the comment helping me increase my uh, ranking on the YouTube. I recently got a lot of subscribers and a lot of questions. I really love to share my knowledge. So please keep doing so. Let's build this community and share the knowledge in um, the fun of making 3D model. Thank you and I will see you next Monday.